Hi, I'm Henry Holstein. I'm one of the authors, the oldest author. What do you think of that term, old or oldest? Bob, what do you think? Give your name. Who are you? Well, as you said, I'm Bob Rixey, and I'm one of the co-authors of the book, the new book, Introduction to Aging. And uh, old is a state of mind. Old indeed is a state of mind. Words have no meaning other than the meaning that culture puts into it. So how does one define old? Can one have an impact by one's behavior on how one ages? 70% of aging is due to lifestyle. Depends on your behavior. And the key to that, to a great extent, is exercise. How are you doing? You need, ro uh, certainly, robotics. You have to engage in weight training. Nutrition is a part. You don't want to be obese. That leads to all sorts of difficulties. What do you think, Bob? Well, I think you have to exercise mentally, too, and that's what we do in our book. We really present a new paradigm of aging where we don't look as old, as old, as separate, with the population aging as rapidly as it is. We think it's important to look at aging in the total concept of the population. That's true, but remember, behavior again makes a difference. If you want to be socially involved, you will age better than those who are isolated. But how does our book do that? Our book points out exactly. The research that indicates the more one is involved, the better one's intellectual ability. And it indicates again that exercise decreases the probability of a deficit of cognitive activity. But our book also deals with myths. Myths have been, have been perpetuated through the years. Myths particularly deal with uh, entitlements, economic issues in general, uh, sexuality, all sorts of things about aging. Are you saying older people engage in sexuality? Occasionally. Okay, okay. <laughs> at least once a week or once a month or whatever. At least, at least what, any of these things. People are different. Uh, we run the gamut of uh, activity among older people, some frequently, some infrequently, but with, they don't have to be limited to any concept, any precept of what we think about as old. But there are some young people watching, you think, you mentioned Social Security will be there for them? Well, that's what our book does. It dispels the myths that so many politicians, so many pundits who think they know about entitlements are really painting a bleak picture of the future. Actually, the future is quite bright. In fact, you and I both know that Social Security will be there in perpetuity. It is simply not going to disappear. It's not even a crisis. Eight reasonable people sitting together for eight weeks could resolve the problems that people say we have with Social Security. In fact, we've done it in the past. We have. And it's worked out. And we have to look at the fact that so many people rely on Social Security. It is a bedrock of what we're looking at for income for older people. Now you think that at least less than half of older people have a pension. Where does that income come from it is, if it isn't Social Security? In fact, Social Security reduced poverty among the elderly by 50%. So read the book. You'll find some things you believe simply are not true.